Good morning, YouTube. How you guys doing? All right. Welcome to another episode of Pro Browns TV. Please subscribe. Anyway, last night was great time for boxing. Obviously not for the opponent that lost. But I'm talking about Kirkland versus Canelo. Canelo scored a brutal knockout against Kirkland. And most of you guys already know that. I mean, highlights, the videos, all already uploaded on YouTube and social media. So you guys, if you guys didn't watch it or didn't see it, didn't get a chance to, uh, just go on YouTube. It, it's, on, uh, it's on HBO already. <clears throat> the highlights of it. But it was a victorious win for Canelo. Like I said, three knockdowns to include the knockout punch, the chin shot. Anyway, today <clears throat> I want to talk to you guys about Canelo's friend, mentor, coach. We can say that. Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya says that he wants to wait at least two years to match Canelo with Triple G Golovkin. Now, these are my thoughts on that one. Canelo is a good fighter. You know, he's young, he's hungry, he's got a lot of uh, fights and experience. He's got over uh, 40 fights and he's got a very, very high percentage knockout. And most of you guys know that. He fought at 154 and a half um, with Kirkland. Matter of fact, both of them weigh in at one, uh, 154 and a half. And now I guess the talk is with Golovkin. Now Golovkin is not your regular dude. I mean, the guy is undefeated, never been knocked down, and usually knocks people out. He's a good fighter, but he's not unbeatable per se. You know, just like some of you guys will say that and disagree with me when I say that Mayweather is unbeatable. He's not. He just hasn't found and matched with the right person. You know, nobody is unbeatable. Nobody, unless something happened to you, like Rocky Marciano. I thought Mike Tyson was the best ever. I thought Mike Tyson was gonna go all the way to 60 and 0. You know, regardless of how good the, you know the, the boxers are, they have the weak points. And like I said, it's how you get into the ring that fight night and how your attitude is and how you're feeling, you know what I mean? Um, you can't be on top all the time. You just, you know, that's not gonna happen unless you retire, you know, um, prior to you, prior to your downhill per se. Like for example, if Mayweather retires right now, he be a perfect score, 48 and 0, right? Or if he wins one, in September, another one against uh, an unknown opponent as of now, then he'd be a 49-0 Tyson Rocky Marciano's record. The only reason why Rocky Marciano was 49-0, or yeah, 49-0, was because he passed after that. But life is like that, you know, you can't be on top all the time, and you can't be down all the time. It, it fluctuates, right? And you guys know that. Anyway... De La Hoya wants to wait two years. Um, Golovkin is a very, very solid competitor. Um, lots of people will argue that he could easily beat Mayweather had Mayweather choose to um, fight him in September, which is not going to happen. Mayweather will never do that. He'll never pick an opponent that is greater risk than Pacquiao or much more risk to his last fight towards 49 and 0 he's not gonna do that if anything mayweather will fight somebody not for title somebody that is semi-solid opponent so he doesn't get criticized a lot but on the other hand everybody criticizes everybody right so yeah golovkin like i said this guy is solid i don't think as of right now i don't have any doubts that if we match you know, in the past, uh, within the next year or so, if we match Canelo with Golovkin, I don't have I don't have no doubts that it would be a good, a good fight. You know, I'm not gonna say that 
I'm not going to sit here and say that Golovkin is just going to knock out Canelo. He's just going to knock him down and just going to go run through him. No. Canelo, you know, he's young and he's got great power. He's got great technique, you know. He's got good defense. He doesn't necessarily have the best defense, but he got a good defense. Who knows? But on the other hand, we have a very solid competitor like Triple G, which a lot of people are like, now the talks are all Triple G. If you guys listen to social medias and ESPN and <clears throat> sports channels and boxing channels, uh, mainly, they're all Triple G, Triple G, Triple G, all the way, right? Triple G is a good, humble guy. He's like I said, he's never been knocked down. He's a solid, solid guy. And he's not a runner. He goes for the kill type, type guy. And he's got a great punch too. So, yeah, but it'll be a good match. I mean, it's not, like I said, the reason why I'm saying that is because some people here are criticizing Canelo that why wait that long or that Triple G is just going to go through Canelo in an easy win. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, the same people that said that Kirkland was just going to breeze through Canelo are the same people. I mean, the comments are the same people that are saying that Triple G is going to go through Canelo. I don't think so. I know Canelo might not be 100% ready yet for Triple G. Not, I'm not saying that he's 100% ready, but I don't think that that Triple G is just going to go through Canelo. No. No, bro. I like Canelo and I like Triple G. Both of them I like the most. But let me see, tell you guys some of the stuff that um, De La Hoya said. He says that there's concern now because Triple G is a solid middleweight. That's true. After Canelo's fight against Kirkland last night, Canelo can make 154 with no problem. Easy, right? We have to keep in mind that Canelo had been out of the ring before this fight for nine months. Think about that. Canelo has been out of the ring for nine months and still scored the most brutal knockout in the past year of 2015 as of yet and 2014. Let's count that. Against a solid Kirkland. Kirkland was, didn't have the best defense, but he's a solid guy too. I mean, he's only lost once. He's lost twice you know, since last night, but he knocks people out within th three rounds. So you're not going to say that, you know, okay, Canelo won a, a vicious knockout against Kirkland just because Kirkland is nobody. No, Kirkland is not nobody. You know, the dude is not 30-some KOs for, for no reason. High percentage KO, I should say. And only lost twice. But like I said, a lot of things goes on in a fight. See, let's go back to what I said. It doesn't matter how good you are, like Tyson, Kirkland, you know, all them cats have, that, that have had good record, perfect record, like Adrian Broner. Um, it doesn't matter how good you are and how confident and arrogant you are and how you prepare yourself, per se. It's how you come about comes fight night. I mean, you could be in a training camp and freaking working out for the last year or two years and be out of the loop and just training hard, like what Kirkland said, you know, he's, he's not on YouTube, he's not a sensation, uh, YouTube sensation, he's not nowhere near media sensation per se, but he's, because he's been working out, that's what he said on 24-7. But he said, he, you know, he was really working out hard, and look what happened, it's not how bad you work out, or how much you work out, or how good you worked out, it's how you come about, how do you feel, you know what I'm saying? How you, um, you know, apply your training against your opponent comes fight night. And it comes also who's a better man that night, right? Tyson lost to Buster Douglas and Adrian Broner lost to Maidana the first times. All these are first times and who else? Um, it doesn't mean that the other opponent is just that so good. No, no. It just happened to be like that, man. I mean, I didn't think Ishida was way better than Kirkland. No way. Just he had a bad night, bro. You know what I mean? He had a bad night, but he knocked people out after that. Everybody that Kirkland has fought ever since he lost to Ishida, he's knocked everybody out. Or at least freaking solid fight. And comes Canelo. 
he uh, he underestimated him a little bit. You know, he was a little a little overconfident per se. But that's past now. You know, and let's move on, right? So Golovkin against Canelo will be a good fight in my opinion. I don't think we should wait two years. I believe we can wait until early next year, maybe same time frame around like this. Cinco de Mayo, you know, that would be a great fight. But for some reason, I don't see that happening. And you guys know why. Um, it says over here that Canelo make the weight relatively easy at 154. He looks strong. He looked tremendous shape. Anybody can look tremendous shape and look strong and look ripped like what Kirkland did, you know, and like any other boxers looked during the weigh-in. That don't mean nothing. I mean, you got people who knock people out without even looking like they worked out or look like they cut. That don't mean nothing. It's how you come out during fight night. He says that, so we have to go back to the drawing board and discuss the future plans and decide what weight he feels comfortable with. But eventually, he's going to grow into middleweight. Um, Canelo is a big, bigger dude. He's a solid type of guy. I don't see him going down to, you know, to 147 per se. Welterweight, nah. He's more like a welterweight dude guy, you know. Light welterweight, welterweight, you know, somewhere around there. But I think he's more comfortable at light welterweight. Um, but... But like I said, it's it's them. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, sorry, light welterweight. I don't know. I keep saying light welterweight. I keep thinking about Mayweather Pacquiao. I mean, light middleweight. Um, he could easily, um, easily be comfortable on the light middleweight. But like I said, I don't see any problem if he goes to middleweight and fight Triple G. Unless Triple G wants to go down. Anyway, it says over here that in a year and a half or two years down the road, Triple G Canelo will surpass any kind of number hype that last week's Floyd Mayweather versus Pacquiao. I don't think so, bro. This is some crap now. Regardless of how good Canelo is and Triple G is, they will never ever surpass the numbers that Mayweather and Pacquiao made last week. Never, bros. No. There's not... I mean, it's not because they're not good to watch. It's not because they're not exciting to watch. It's the fact that fans are still sore and are still bleeding, per se, from that disappointment. They're not going to pay no $100. No way, bro. No. That's just my opinion, though. I wouldn't pay for no $100 Triple G and Canelo. And that's not going to happen. Come on. Let's be real now. It says over here that it's going to be, it also surpass any kind. It will not surpass, not, nor will it come close to that. Not one boxer in a history of boxing got paid over $200 million for one fight and another one got paid over $100 million, a little shy of $200 million. I mean, you guys know Pacquiao is closing like, he closing like after the pay-per-view and all that stuff, um, after the, the fight was set and done. He nearly close 200 million, Pacquiao, that is. And made with a nearly close 250 million dollars. No one, nobody, it's not gonna happen anymore. It's not gonna happen. Even if we get Mayweather and Pacquiao again, which is a long shot, which is pretty much like not gonna happen, people will never again fly to Vegas out of their way and and pay that much money hundred thousand dollars a seat you know fifteen hundred dollars for the cheapest ten dollars for a weigh-in not again never that's not gonna happen bros mark my word it ain't gonna happen even like i said if we see the mayweather and pacquiao again which is not gonna happen likely very unlikely it'll happen it will not it's not gonna make the same numbers anymore it's just you know people are are, are hurting Pe people are hurt and people are disappointed people are are bleeding from that one you know um, contrary to popular belief, a lot of people are saying that they're done with boxing. I mean, people that subscribe to my channel and watch my videos and comments, they tell me they're done with boxing. And I know why that is. And I, I know how it feels. Yes, Canelo and Kirkman's fight last night was a little boost, but it's not enough. 
because people wanted to see that kind of action against Mayweather and Pacquiao. You know, whether Pacquiao did that to Mayweather or whether Mayweather did that to Pacquiao. We wanted to see some actions, but all we saw was, you guys know what. Anyway, it says over here that De La Hoya should match Canelo up against Golovkin if he can get past a fight against Miguel Cotto this year or next year. Now, that would be more of realistic. You know, Canelo and Cotto, that'd be a good solid fight, right? I wouldn't necessarily say make it a Cinco de Mayo sensation type. Nah. I would say something like, how about in November or late this year? You know, that'd be, good. that'd be a good fight. Um, both fighters are, I can easily or comfortably say veteran, not because of ages now, because because of the record and because of their experience. They all, they both have a lot of fights and they both have been through some of the tough fighters and, and did well. They both fought Mayweather. Um, Cotto fought Pacquiao. Canelo hasn't fought uh, hasn't um, fought uh, Pacquiao yet, but I don't think I don't, I don't see that happening since Canelo is, like I said, middleweight, light middleweight type guy. Uh, it could happen, but Pacquiao is out. You know, he's out until probably next year, if not mid middle of next year. So that's not even really the question. So. <sighs> But Canelo versus Cotto, Canelo versus Golovkin, those are not easy fights for Canelo. It ain't going to be easy, but it's going to be interesting. And I, it's, it's doable and it's winnable, if that's even a word. I mean, it's not impossible to win against Golovkin. It's not impossible against, to win against Cotto. And it also, that's vice versa. It's not impossible to win against Canelo. You know, um, but yeah, out of those three great boxers, um, Golovkin is the only one that's undefeated. But both Canelo and Golovkin are the only ones that hadn't been knocked down yet. That'd be a great match. I mean, ever since, I guess, the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight, we now like to see action. That's, I don't know. It seems like, I mean, just look at, just look at the social media, the comments. Just look, look at YouTube, look at ESPN, look at all this boxing world, social media type stuff, interviews. People were awake and more into it and comment and said good things and like uh, uh, back to life again per se after the last night's Canelo Kirkland fight everybody was down bros I don't know what happened everybody was down after the Mayweather Pacquiao fight it's like F boxing forget it I'm done with it but it was a little lift but it's not enough we need a little bit more yeah so we need to see somebody Solid competitors for Canelo. Um, interesting competitors. Cotto it is. I would say Cotto's next. Not Golovkin yet. Let's just see how he does with Cotto. Um, I believe, I strongly believe that Canelo, De La Hoya in his corner, would rather see Cotto first rather than Golovkin. Maybe Golovkin second if Canelo does better with Cotto, right? Or do good with Cotto. But yeah, um, the dream over here, I'm not even going to read it, but the dream over here was from Canelo to fight. Next is Pacquiao. Um, you know, Mexican, Filipinos always have a history and it it um, creates great numbers and that will be a big payday for Canelo. Um, probably bigger, bigger payday than what he made against Mayweather when he fought him. I, I can see that happening, but... Pacquiao is out, you know what I mean? So that's out of question for now, at least 18 months, right? 15 to 18 months, something like that. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Golovkin or Cotto for Canelo? De La Hoya wants to wait two years for Canelo to fight Golovkin. I'd say about a year and a half. But to me, Canelo should fight Cotto first, then Golovkin. Like I said, let me know what you guys think. 12 Rounds TV. Please subscribe to this channel. I upload videos every day and we'll talk about the, the latest and greatest of boxing. And as always, take care and stay safe out there. A lot of crazies. Till next time, peace.